Welcome back to another video where I'm talking about queries in Google Sheets. And specifically in this video, I want to talk about a couple of caveats that I hadn't discussed in some of my last videos. And they're things that I want you to be aware of with regards to queries. Um, so in this particular video, what we're going to do is something very, very simple. And we've done it in one of my previous videos. We're going to take two columns of data we're going to use a query to combine those columns into a single column. And we did this in a previous video with AB students. But there was something really important that I didn't mention in that video, and I want you to be aware of it. Okay, so the goal here, if this works properly, is to not have column A values or column B values, is to just have the numbers 1 through 10 and 11 through 16 all in a single column in this sheet. I know that's not a huge ask, but I want to just show you a couple of caveats of queries so that you're aware of them. So let's go ahead and get started here in my combining two sets of data sheet with the query. I'm going to say equal query. And we'll start very basically by just doing the call to the raw data here from the A column to the B column. So I can do that just by doing A to B. And then for my query, remember we always place our query in double quotes. I'm going to do select and I'll just see the asterisk so that it just returns everything. And then we have one row of headers. So this is our very basic query. We shouldn't be surprised by any of this. And there it is. It's populating everything. Awesome. Okay, so that's working. We know that we have our query information here set up properly. Now, let's identify a couple of issues here. First, we don't want these values, column A values, column B values. Now we could attempt to get rid of them by saying there are no header rows. Um, and if we do that, then it actually is going to take those out. Uh, but now it has this blank space here because it actually recognizes those as header rows and is leaving them blank here. So then the next thing I could do so that we at least aren't dealing with those header rows at all is I could start on the second row of my raw data, which is where my values actually start. So when I do that, it shifts everything up. So great, so I've got one through 10 and 11 through 16. No header rows. We've modified our query very simply here to where now we have zero header rows and we're starting in our raw data on the row directly below our header rows. Excellent. But there's one big problem. My data is occupying two columns, and I want it to be in a single column. OK, so there's actually a way we can handle this, and we've already done it once before. It's going to require us to change the data we're referring to and our query just a little bit. So let's start with the data. What we're going to do is something that we did in the tutorial where we walked through doing um, an AB on roll sheet. And that is we're actually going to call two separate sets of data. Now they're actually going to come from the same source, but we're going to do B2 to B and A2 to A. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying go to my raw data sheet and get column A, ignoring the first cell. Go to my raw data sheet, get column B, ignoring the first cell. So that is a query with multiple data sources. But now, instead of doing select there, I want to pull the data that is in the first column of each of my data sources. Now, in my raw data here, that first column is column A, because there's only one column. So raw data, when I'm looking at column A, that is my first column. When I'm looking at raw data column B, Column B is my first column. So here, remember, when we pull from multiple sources, if we're going to designate columns, we can't refer to them by their letter. Instead, we use this qualifier, call one. And this says, from whichever data source you're pulling, get the first column. OK, so based on this, what I should expect to see is 1 through 10 and then 11 through 16, because I'm going into my raw data, column A, and I'm selecting that. And then I'm going into my raw data, column B, and I'm selecting that. So when I hit Enter, I don't see that. And you might be saying, well, wait a second. We just walked through this query. Like, you're calling the right data. 
what's going on? Well, the problem you'll see is that here and here, I'm not just selecting in my query the values of data. I'm not just saying go from B2 to B7 and B1, I'm sorry, uh, A2 to A11. Instead, what I'm actually saying is start at A2 and go all the way down in that column, in the A column, and grab every single piece of data that fits this criteria, which right now is everything in column one. So underneath my data, I have all of these empty cells. In fact, I have a thousand empty cells. So it's literally saying, hey, pull these 999 cells and populate them. And if I scroll down here in this sheet until I get to cell 999, I have nothing but blank cells, and then all of a sudden, I see my data from column B. So right now, the problem with our query is that we don't have any kind of qualifier that's gonna say, hey, ignore empty cells. So if you do a very basic query like this, it might look like it's only returning 10 pieces of data if you're looking at column A from your source data, but it's actually returning everything in that column, including blank cells. So the good news here is there's a very easy way that we can eliminate this. We can use the where keyword in our query to say ignore any cells that are blank. Now, there is a very specific way we're going to do this. Um, you might think that we're gonna say where column one doesn't equal that. Because that's typically in Excel the way that you say when something is not blank. You can always use the is blank um, to do kind of a truthy statement if something is blank. Um, but if I do this, if I say where column one is not equal to that, I'm actually gonna get NA. And it's gonna say query completed with an empty output. So as I've said before, these queries are based off of SQL queries. And in SQL queries, when something is blank, it actually has a value that is null. So all we have to do here to get our query to work the way we want it to is to have a where clause that says where column one is not null. And now when we do that, we will get all of our data in a single column. So again, caveat with queries is the fact that if you're querying an entire column, as I did in some of my previous examples, you're not just pulling in values uh, or cells with values, you're actually pulling in cells that have values and cells that are null. So if we only want to pull in the cells that have values, we need to have the where statement where column, whatever column you're interested in, is not null. All right, so that is the video on one of the query caveats. I'll be creating a couple more of these videos throughout the course of this week. If you found this video useful, informative, please be sure to like and subscribe, uh, and I will be sure to add any additional videos that I build out uh, as quickly as possible and that subscription at least will make sure that you're always aware of them as they hit. Uh, I offer this in every one of my videos um, moving forward, and that is if you are working with Google Sheets and there's a specific topic you're interested in learning more about, um, feel free to comment and ask or request, and I can see if I can put together videos, um, either one or a series of videos that can um, address that topic for you. So again, like, subscribe, be sure to comment if you have questions or if you'd like me to focus on a specific topic moving forward. Thanks again, as always, for tuning in.